Hey guys, Kyle Ken Dylan here, and today we're going to be starting a new series called Dylan's Dragon Ball Dissection Z. Now today we're going to be talking about the difference between each fusion and which fusion I like and think is better than the other. Now, I am no power scaling guy, I, uh, everything I'm getting is from Dragon Ball Ten. Most people agree that the Tara fusion is the best fusion because it's the Tara earrings, we'll talk about that later. Now, in my opinion, the fusion dance is the best form of fusion. We're only talking about the the, uh, the Saiyan fusions, like the Meteor Moran and the Patara. We'll probably have another video versus the assimilation that the Namekian, Namekians do and the absorption that Majin Buu does, because those are both fusions too. A lot of fusions. Anyway, the fusion dance is a short series of poses that are performed by two individuals of equal power levels and roughly equal size. To correctly perform the fusion, the fusees must strike the poses in a perfectly symmetrical image of one another. The result of correctly performed fusion dance is a superior being whose power is multiplied several fold over what is over that of what the original individual fusees was. If the dance is performed incorrectly, however, which is one of the funniest parts of Dragon Ball Z. It will result in an obese or skinny character who is much weaker than either of the Fusees individually. Though in Dragon Ball GT, this is changed so that instead of it becoming a failed fusion, the fusion process from an incorrectly performed dance will cancel before the fusion can be achieved. Using through this technique uses up a lot of key. Now, it's weird because there's a lot of caveats with this individual fusion technique. When we first are revealed to this technique, and Goku learned this in other worlds, so he went to other worlds, he died in the cell arc, died in the cell arc, and came back. Now, whenever he comes back for the day, he brings along a technique with him called the Medium War Infusion, or just a fusion dance. Now, there's some caveats with this that I think are really cool that he, he explains very, very in detail. You have 30 minutes once you fuse. Only people that have the same kind of power level and same kind of stature can fuse together. Not only that, <clears throat> but you have an hour of recharge time. So you can fuse for 30 minutes and then you have to wait an hour. I always thought it was because each individual person, you know, they have to wait for their power to come back. So like, you have 30 and then times 2 once they're separate. That would be an hour. That's just my conjecture. Now, this is my favorite form of fusion, simply because it's just, I find it amazing. I find it cool. Now, my favorite fusion with this, because there is two of them that are known at this point, is Gotenks, who used to be my favorite, and then Gogeta. Now, Gogeta is probably one of the coolest characters in Dragon Ball ever. And he's in a movie, so he's technically non-canon, unless you count the new movie, Broly, whatever. Now, when Goku and Vegeta fuse in Otherworld, it's against an enemy called Janimba. Janimba is so strong because he has all of the intense hatred and evil from everything that ever lived from the evil scrubbing machine. This little imp goes to it, messes up, it blows up, and turns him into a being of pure evil, much like Majin Buu. <clears throat> now, this little imp turns into something so powerful that it, it destroys or disrupts the flow of the afterlife. No one can get into heaven, dead or rising back, it's just, it's just a mess. He's, he's performing on a multi-dimensional level. We'll save that for later. Now, one thing that is really cool that isn't talked about a lot, <coughs> excuse me, is that the clothes that the Medium Moran Fusion gives is actually Medium Moran attire from the from the original people who made the technique. It's their home attire, which I find really awesome. Now we're going to talk about the Torah for a little while. Now these earrings are worn by all Supreme Kais, and it's their standard outfit. Coming in various colors, it really doesn't matter. And the earrings have the ability to fuse two people together into a single entity for an hour. Although it's permanent if Spring Kai is involved. We didn't know that. Basically, in the original Dragon Ball Z, it is never stated to have that hour time limit for mortals. 
It was just stated to be permanent, which made it a huge risk for Goku and Vegeta to fuse together. And I mean, that, I think that's why Goku was going to go for Gohan first. But then when he realized that was impossible now, he chose Vegeta. Now, whenever a person puts one on one ear and the other person puts it on the opposite ear, they fuse together, so it's basically just flying together and there's a bunch of light. They make a fusion. Now, this fusion is league stronger of what any other pe person in Dragon Ball Z at the time can do. It is, in fact, he is the strongest in the original Dragon Ball Z. For the simple fact that he can body margin do, he, they're destroying dimensions when they fight. They're hacking dimensions. Super Buu could already show, excuse me, in his base, that he could open the hyperbolic time chamber without the door by just cracking through a dimension. Now, whenever this this fusion happens, it makes a weird fusion of the attire between both of the people. So you have Goku's orange jeep kind of on the bottom, and you have the uh, battle suit on the top. Now, which of these do I think is stronger or the most superior fusion? Now, the interesting thing is that you can kind of make an argument that these are kind of the same Goku and Vegeta in the movies that are in the main timeline. Simple the fact because Goku has Super Saiyan 3. So it's either before or during Majin Buu Saga. Now, just the simple fact that Goku can body a, you know, the first form of Janimba, a Super Saiyan 3, I'd say it's sometime during the, the Super Buu Saga. Now, that would make, you know, them relative in strength. However, Janimba and... Janimba and Super Buu, and Kid Buu for that matter, don't seem to be that much different from each other. Because, as I said, Janimba is screwing with the afterlife. He's cracking through things on a multiple dimensional level and screwing with things far beyond comprehension of the normal world. Kid Buu is a force of evil destruction far beyond the likes of mortals can comprehend and is cracking through dimensions at kind of the same level. Now, it's stated that Super Buu could, could destroy dimensions, and he does do it, I think, twice. Once in the hyperbolic time chamber, and once while he's fighting. I think Gohan or Vegeta, I can't remember. Now, the thing is, I think Gogeta is stronger. For one really good reason, and it can be argued, and this is my conjecture, that Gogeta is actually stronger, since the fact that the Imp is empowered with all the evil throughout all time that has come to pass up to that moment. All the Saiyans, everyone that's ever been to, and it, it does have the Saiyans too, because Raditz went to the afterlife and King Yama had to beat the crap out of him. He said, uh, Goku, Goku asked, hey, did Raditz come through here? So, there's Raditz's power, and remember, Super Buu just has five Saiyans, you know, I guess. Goten, Trump, not, not five, three, thinking of the god thing, he has Trunks, Gohan, Goten, Piccolo, he had Goten's power, I think that's why I'm getting mixed up, so he has all of them, but the fusion scrubbing machine has just has all the evil throughout all time, and while Super Buu and Kid Buu to that point are very awesome and very terrifying entities, I, they're not affecting multi-dimensional planes on the same kind of scale that Janimba was. And that's just first form Janimba. Janimba has a second form, so like if they're kind of the same, Super Boo and Janimba, then you have Janimba going Super Janimba, and then you have Boo going Kid Boo. Now people say that Buhan is probably the strongest Boo. But I think Kid Buu's the strongest Boo for the simple reason that it's kind of like the, the GT Super Power Mega Bad Bomb that Sh uh, Sin Shinron does. <clears throat> and it's that, it's like all of the evil was like amplified, it was like purified. That's why it's called Pure, pure Evil Boo. So he might in fact be stronger because there's nothing holding him back at that point. It's just a beast. Now, one thing I would like to talk about before I end this video is the instability of the fusion dance, and this is probably where Pratara 
But no, actually, I think the Batara do it too. With either of these, it, it's plot convenience. It really is. Because in the original Dragon Ball Z, it stated you have that 30, uh, uh, 30 minute. 30 minute fusion time. However, we learned that if you go Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 3, or Super Saiyan 4, God forbid, it will drain, or Super Saiyan Blue, it will immensely drain the amount of time you have to either like 15 minutes or just 10 minutes for Super Saiyan 4. And it also depends on what condition the, the fighters started off fighting at. As where we learned that when Tara, I think it slices it down from an hour to 30 minutes whenever they go blue. Now, that one's kind of BS to me because they shouldn't be losing power if they're using God Key and controlling it, but it might just be the instability of these forms. Now, you're going to ask me, I go with Fusion Dance, everything about it, I just find cooler than the Batara that are just earrings. But, if you like Batara, that's up to you too. Uh, I just wanted to state my opinion on this matter and kind of dissect it a little bit and talk about it. Alright. Kyle Ken Dylan out of here. See ya.